when it comes to binary trees, more than a problem, this is much more of a concept in itself. So you're given a binary tree with a root, right? And you have to find me the maximum depth of a certain node, right? So this tree would have certain paths, right? From the root to all of the leaf nodes, correct? And you have to determine me what is the maximum depth of such a node, correct? So there are a lot of ways in which the same problem can be asked. You could be asked, okay, how many levels are there in a binary tree? You could be asked, okay, what is the height of a binary tree? And similarly, in this case, you are being asked, okay, what is the maximum depth of a binary tree? So in all of these problems, the underlying concept will remain exactly the same. And that is that you have to calculate the height of a binary tree. That means how many levels are present, correct? Because if you have n number of levels, then that will be your maximum depth, right? If you have n levels, that is your height of the binary tree, right? So we will be focusing on finding the height of the binary tree and that height will also be the maximum depth. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will look at the brute force solution and how you can approach this problem. And then going forward, we will try to optimize this solution. As always, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us first try to make sure that we understand what do you mean by the height of a binary tree. The height of a binary tree simply means the maximum distance between the root node and all the leaf nodes of a binary tree. So let us take up our test case number one. In a test case number one, you have this node as the root node, right? And you have four leaf nodes in this tree, correct? So the height of a binary tree would be the maximum distance of all of these four nodes from the root. So in this scenario, let us try to find out these distances. For the first leaf node, the distance would be one and then two, right? So this distance is two. For node number two, let us try to find out the distance. This time, the distance is again two, right? So in this particular scenario, the distance of all of these four nodes is two, correct? So we can safely say that the height of this binary tree is equal to two. Now, this is a very simple case. Let us take up our test case number two, where our tree looks a little bit more complex, right? So in a tree number two, let us first find out all of our leaf nodes. So this is a leaf node, this is a leaf node, and this is a leaf node, right? Now, what you simply need to do is find out the distance from the root node to all of these leaf nodes and get the maximum value. So let us try doing it one by one. For our first node, the distance is one and then two, right? Going over to our second leaf node, the distance is again two, right? But in this test case, we have one more leaf node. And if you try to find out the distance, that is one, two, three, and then ultimately four. So the distance of this leaf node is four. So given by the definition, the height of a binary tree should be the maximum value, right? So in test case number two, the height of my binary tree would be four. Now, if you have understood this problem statement, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution can guarantee you that a solution to a problem exists. So let us say you are given with this binary tree and I ask you to find its height. What is the first thing that comes to your mind given by the definition of the height? The height is the maximum distance between the root node and the leaf node, right? So one straight away method that should come into your mind is you can find out all the distances between the root and the leaf nodes. So what does that tell you? You can easily create a table where on the left side, you can store all of your leaf nodes. And on the right, you can write down all the distances from root. So given your binary tree, can you identify all of the leaf nodes? 2 is a leaf node, 6 is a leaf node, 5 is a leaf node, 8 is a leaf node, and then 10 is a leaf node, right? So you can write down all of these values in your table. Okay, the next step now is to calculate the distances of each of these leaf nodes from the root. So you can start from the beginning. For node number 2, the distance would be 1 and then 2, right? So you can simply write down this distance in your table, right? Going forward with our next leaf node, that is number six. So that distance is one, two, and then three. 
So you can write down the distance three in your table now. Moving ahead with my node number five. So the distance would be one and then two. Once again, I will write down this distance. Moving ahead with node number eight, the distance would be one, then two, and then three. I would once again write down three in my table. Going ahead, I have my node number 10, right? So this distance would be one, two, three, and then four, correct? So I write down this distance four in my table. Now, what you can simply do is you can scan through this table and look at the maximum distance. You can see that four is the maximum distance, right? And hence, this is your answer. Or you can say that four is the height of this binary tree. Now, this method works and it will give you correct answer every time. But can you see the problem with this approach? What happens if your tree is very huge? What if you have a lot of leaf nodes? Will you go on to calculate the distance between each of them? That would be very hectic, right? And it would take a lot of time. So try to think of an efficient approach. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, so let us try to take our same example once again and try to find an efficient solution. When you're trying to find efficient solutions to problem, think outside the box. Don't just jump onto the definition and try to come up with a solution. You have to find out the height of a binary tree, right? And from all the examples that we just saw, the height of a binary tree just looks like the levels in a binary tree, right? If your deepest node is at the height seven, then you can also see that there are seven levels in the binary tree, right? For example, when I would look at this tree, I can say that root is at level zero, one and four is at level one, two, three, five, seven is at level two, six, eight, nine is at level three, and then ultimately 10 is at level four, right? So if you observe carefully, what does this tell you? The deepest level, this deepest level is also the height of a binary tree, right? So can we somehow take advantage of the level order traversal technique to find the height of a binary tree? Maybe yes, by the way. If you're new to level order traversals, I would highly recommend you to check out my video on it. So, if you remember, when we were using level order traversals, we took the advantage and help of a queue data structure, right? Because that follows a first and first order policy. So, what we were actually doing in our queue, we took the first element 11 and then we inserted it in our queue, correct? So, this marks the end of level 1, correct? Next, what happened is we inserted all the child nodes of the first level, right? So the child nodes of first level are one and four, right? So when I would insert the elements at this level in my queue, my queue would become like, right? And this marks the end of level two. So far so good. What was the next step? What were the next elements that you added in your queue? You added all the children of the previous level to your queue next, right? So the new children are two, three, five, and seven, right? So I will add all of these elements in my queue. And this is how you completed a level. And this is how you marked the end of one more level. Once again, going forward, what you're gonna do is, you will add all the children to your queue next. So I will add my element six, eight, and nine. And once again, this marks the end of a level. I am left with my remaining element that is number 10. So I will add this 10 again to my queue. Now, if you look at the queue closely, you can see all these markers, right? These are just defining the number of levels that are present in your binary tree. And you know that the height of a binary tree is the maximum number of levels, right? So to get your answer, what you can just do is you can count these pointers. They are four in total, right? And hence, four is your answer. So the height of this binary tree is four. Now let us try to do a dry run of the code and see how you can implement this solution. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample tree that we will try to find the height of. Oh, and by the way, the complete code and its test cases are available on my GitHub profile as well. You can find the link in the description below. So to start off, the root of this binary tree is passed in as an input parameter to the function, right? Next, we create a queue that will store all of the elements while doing a level order traversal, right? Going forward, what we do is we add the root element to the queue. So this will add 
3 to my q right now. Correct? Next, we say the number of levels equals to minus 1. That is just the starting point. So, I start off with my number of levels equals to minus 1. Next, I have an infinite while loop that will keep on running throughout until your tree ends completely. First of all, we maintain a count at each level. So, the queue size will tell you how many nodes are at the current level. Currently, you are at level 0, right? And you have only one node, right? So, as you can see, the size of the queue is also 1. That means you have only one node at the first level. So, what does that tell you? When will the tree end? Whenever this node count is 0, that means your queue is completely empty or you don't have any nodes at this level. That means your tree has ended, right? So, we just add a check that if node count at level equals to 0, then you return the answer and this will tell you the total number of levels. Now, since there are some elements in the queue, so what we need to do is we need to keep on processing our tree. We need to add all the child elements of this level to our queue. So what do I do next? I start a while loop again that will run until I have traversed all of the elements at that particular level. I get the element from the queue, so I will get this element 3, right? Now, I need to check if this element has a left child and it has a right child. Then add it to the queue. Since 3 has both a left and a right, what I will do is, I will add 1 and 2 to my queue. Correct? Now, since I have traversed this element 3, what I am going to do is, I will simply reduce the node count at level. Right? Because I have traversed this. Right? So, this will change this value to 0 once again. And that means that I have completed this level. And as soon as I complete a level, what I do is, I increment the count of number of levels. So, this will change the value of levels to 0. Because I have just covered level number 0. Right? Now, moving ahead, what do I do? My while loop runs again. Right? And this time, I will again find out the number of nodes at a particular level. This time, I am at my next level. Right? And you can see two nodes over here. And as you can see, the queue size is also 2. So, this will change the node count at level to 2. Once again, we won't enter this if loop and we will once again start a while loop to add all the children of this level into my queue. You can see that one does not have any children, right? So, this will just pop away from the queue. Next, you have the element 2. Now, 2 has a child that is 4, right? So, I will add 4 to my queue and this 2 will go away. Once you have traversed this level, the node count at level will again become 0 and you have once again traversed an entire level. And as soon as you have traversed a level, the value of number of level increases by 1 and the number of levels changes to 1. Once again, this loop will run. You can see that we have reached our next level. You see only one value, right? And even your queue has only one value. So this keeps things consistent. And once again, your node count at level is 1 again. Once again, this loop will run. You can see that 4 does not have any children, right? So it gets popped from the queue and no new elements are added. But what you do is, since you have completed this level, you will increment the number of levels, right? So the value of number of levels changes to 2, correct? Now when this while loop runs again, there are no elements in the queue, right? And this is the time when this if condition will get executed. You don't have any new nodes and hence you can simply return the number of levels. And this will return your answer that is 2. So you can say that the height of this binary tree is 2. The time complexity of this solution is order of n, where n is the number of nodes in the binary tree because you are traversing through each of them. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n. That is because you are maintaining a queue that can have all the elements of the tree. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I believe now you can see how the height of the binary tree will also be the maximum depth of the binary tree, correct? And this brings up another important point. That is the level order traversal technique. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. Because when you are doing a level order traversal, first of all, it behaves in an iterative fashion, correct? So, it becomes easier to visualize and debug what is actually happening. And a level order traversal makes sure that you are traversing all the nodes and you will always guarantee that, okay, you are traversing a node. And this makes things so much easier. 
you will be able to understand what is the time complexity, you will be able to understand what is the space complexity, and that is what makes the level order traversal technique very, very important. So what I want you to do is, in the comment section below, tell me any other problems where the level order traversal technique has been very, very helpful. Also tell me if you found some other variations of the same problem, finding the number of levels in a binary tree, finding the height of a binary tree, what else? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what you want to learn next. Until then, see ya!